So good afternoon and welcome to the Tuesday Times Roundtable, where each week we engage in conversation around current global issues, trends, problems, and opportunities that are of interest to you. Our weekly Tuesday Times Roundtables are made possible through a formal partnership with the New York Times. This partnership also provides you, FIU students, faculty, and staff with free digital access to the New York Times newspaper. I am Sherry Beeson, one of your hosts, as are Anna Prado here in the back and Michelle Zaldivar, who is monitoring this session live on Zoom. We are all with the Office of Global Learning Initiatives and if you'd like to know more about our programming, such as the Global Learning Medallion, Peace Corps Prep, stick around afterwards and ask one of us questions. We'd love to talk to you about it. Quick reminders for today, this session is being recorded. And if you are a Global Learning Medallion student, this event is worth one point. So whether you're joining us here, face-to-face, -face, or live via Zoom, hang on, <laughs> there we go. We're glad you're here to learn all about podcasting. Yay! <laughs> and later during this session, we will be taking your questions. So if you are joining us virtually, please post your questions in the chat, and Michelle will make sure your questions are posed to our presenters. Otherwise, Anna and I will be wandering around here with mics so that we can get your question answered. Now it is my pleasure to introduce today's guest speakers. To my left is Enrique Rosell, and he is the program manager at the Wolfsonian Public Humanities Lab, or WPHL, here at FIU. His work focuses on supporting and planning all events around FIU and the Miami community coming from the WPHL and managing external relationships and partnerships. Enrique works primarily with WPHL's Community Data Curation Mellon Grant Initiatives, where he is assisting eight local museums in digitizing part of their archives, collecting oral histories from the local community, and recruiting interns from FIU interested in local history. Enrique also leads Our Stories, a photographic and reflective undergraduate student-based project podcast series that documents student stories during the COVID-19 pandemic through the lens of disposable cameras and written reflections. To Enrique's left is Amanda McDowell, and she serves as an assistant director for the Center for Leadership and Services, or CLS, here at FIU. Her experience in higher education has focused on developing collaborative and innovative partnerships across campuses, leadership programming, and civic engagement. Amanda currently serves as the program manager for Changemaker Initiatives at FIU that includes oversight of a student-led impact investment board, community engagement mini grants, a social impact shark tank comp competition, and university-wide days of service. Within her role, she has supported the launch of Tuesday Talks with CLS, a podcast about student leaders, alumni, and influential members of the community that inspire us. And last but certainly not least is Roxana Corradino, who is a proud alumna of Florida International University, woo, woo, right? Mm -hmm. And is an adjunct lecturer in art and art history. She received her Master of Fine Arts degree from the School of the Art Institute of Chicago, where her work explored issues of Cubanidad. She has also had several local TV and radio appearances discussing a variety of subjects from education to politics to food. Mm. Professor Corradino has also exhibited her artwork in several group shows here in Miami and the Midwest. And for the last several semesters, she has engaged her students in creating podcasts that feature some of Miami's finest artists. Please join me in welcoming our crew here. <laughs> Thank you, Sherry. 
Hello. Uh, thank you so much, Sherry, for those super kind words and introductions. Uh, so we'll jump right into it. I'm going to take off my mask because we're pretty far away from everybody, okay? But I highly encourage everyone to wear their masks at all times. Um, but we'll jump right into it. So thank you all for joining virtually or in person uh, to our All About Podcasting Tuesday Times Roundtable. Um, if you have never been to one of these, um, definitely go to all of them. Some of my favorite events that I've ever been to at FIU ever um, have been Tuesday Times Roundtables that have highly impacted me um, and I think about all the time. You can ask them. I'm always talking about them. So definitely uh, come to more of them because they're incredible. Uh, but today we're going to be focusing on podcasting. Um, so if you ever been curious about how to start your own podcast, what you might need, if it seems kind of like a daunting task, um, which it, it might seem like that sometimes, we really want to answer all of your questions here and make it a little bit more clear. So whether you're here virtually or in person, make sure to ask as many questions as you'd like, um, especially at the end. We'll have some time for questions as well. Well, but if you'd like to say anything or have a question while we're going, uh, feel free to ask. Um, but yeah, we really hope to clear things up and have you, you know, get ready to start your own podcast as you go here. And we're also going to talk a little bit about how things have changed in the past year uh, with the pandemic and podcasting. So um, going forward, you all already kind of heard about us, so we will skip this part since we already have been introduced. So we're going to jump straight into our each, each of us have our own podcast that we manage or multiple podcasts. So we're going to uh, kind of focus on each of those right now. So the one that I'm going to speak about today is the Our Stories FIU podcast that I do primarily uh, with the Wilsonian Public Humanities Lab. It was a collaboration. I used to work at the Honors College as well. So shout out to Honors. And if you're an Honors student, you know, you probably got a million emails from me in the past. Um, so this was an initiative that started it right in the summer. Well, it started in the spring as soon as the pandemic started. Um, it's called Our Stories FIU. So it's been in the making for about a year and a half now, which is absolutely insane. Um, so if you go to ourstories.fiu.edu, you'll be able to see everything there. We have uh, the students that participated. They're all honor students as well. You'll see the images that they took. Um, well, so let me back up. Let me tell you about the project real quick. So the project was basically born um, because I wanted to find a way to connect students and help them tell their stories in a different way. I'm also a huge nerd when it comes to film photography. I always have this thing on me. This is my baby. So um, I'm a huge advocate for film photography and, and uh, kind of using that medium. So um, when I connected with Rebecca Friedman um, and Andrea Fanta from the Wolfsonian Public Humanities Lab, it was, a, it was a good opportunity to help students do this. So basically, we sent students, um, we put out a call for FIU students, honor students, and any students to, to join us. And we sent them each a disposable camera, uh, with only, which limited them to 27 exposures. Uh, so we sent them the camera in the middle of the pandemic, you know, through the mail. We did this all remotely, all virtually, which is another thing we'll talk about, you know, whether or not you can do a podcast virtually, or do you have to do it in person, or which way can you do both ways, right? So um, we did this all remotely. We sent them the cameras. We sent them instructions. We met with them on Zoom to kind of talk about, you know, how to use the camera, how to not use the camera, kind of going over rules. And the students took amazing, beautiful images of their story during that summer, of everything that they went through during that summer. Then they wrote a written reflection about their experience after seeing their images, which took you know a few weeks after they returned the camera. So it was, it was a long gap between the students taking their images and experiencing everything during the, the first you know peak summer of COVID, and then actually seeing their images. After they saw them, after an extended period of time since it was filmed, they wrote the reflections. Um, then they came on a podcast with Andrea and I, where we kind of de debriefed their reflection. They wrote their reflection. I mean, they read the reflection. And then uh, we talked about their experience. So it was a lot of really tough, like heartbreaking conversations about, you know, some tough times that students are going through during the pandemic, you know. And, and there were, I feel like there was so much that happened that summer um, that we would almost forget until we were, you know, um, interviewing a student. Like uh, we had an international student who was talking about being away from her family or when there was uh, those few weeks where it was kind of up in the air whether or not international students were going to be able to stay in the country if they weren't taking in-person classes, which I had almost forgotten about because th that summer was so jam-packed with, with issues. You know, it was, a, it was a really turbulent summer. So... Um, I love this project. It's, a, it's got a very close place in my heart. If you go to, to the website, you'll be able to listen to the podcast. You'll be able to see the images, read the reflections. You can also check it out on um, all streaming services, so Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, all of that if you want to hear them. And we're currently interviewing students for our second cohort, um, which we're, we're a little bit late on because we took the summer off, but they took their images in spring 2021. So it's, it's, it's an interesting dynamic to see 
the students from summer and everything that they went through in the middle of the pandemic and the students in the spring when we were getting vaccinated and kind of stepping outside of our homes a little bit more. So that's coming out soon, hopefully by the end of the semester. Um, but that's our stories and I'll pass it on to Amanda. Okay. I have my mic. Oh, that's right. That's right. Thank you. Uh -huh. um, okay. So with the Center for Leadership and Service, can you guys hear me? Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, we have a podcast that we launched last spring called Tuesday Talks with CLS. And so our podcast is primarily hosted on Spotify. And the way that we did it is through different seasons. So we launched our first season in the spring and it incorporated a few different episodes. Um, and it was all geared towards our student leaders here at FIU. So we featured a few FIU alumni, where they are now and how their experiences at CLS got them to where they are. We also featured a few of our student groups um, in the Center for Leadership and Service. So the Panther Community Action Board, Rorathon, Relay for Life, um, were all featured in different podcasts, talking about what students could possibly experience as we were slowly returning um, from the pandemic and being fully virtual. And then lastly, we had a few podcasts focused on our um, different staff members in the office just sharing some of their own experiences and responding to what anyone had approached us with that they wanted to hear um, on a podcast from our department. So the Center for Leadership and Service primarily focuses on co-curricular programming centered around community engagement and leadership. So we made sure that all of our episodes, whether they were with alumni, students, staff, all encompass some aspects um, of what our listeners could experience if they participated in our programs with CLS. That's all. There we go. Okay. All right. So um, my um, podcast is called Exploring Art Podcast. Um, Exploring Art Podcast started. Um, well, I took a, a, a workshop um, spring 2020. Did you participate in Exploring Art Podcast? Oh, okay. So Exploring Art Podcast started after I took a workshop um, in the humanities um, with the Humanities Edge on undergraduate research. And I was um, trying to connect my students with artists in the community. And so I thought that the best way was to create a platform where I can do this and podcasts just fit the bill. So. Um, I had learned how to use um, some very easy software um, in order to produce podcasts for my own podcast, and um, which is called Art and Joy Inc. And um, I decided to go ahead and use that uh, knowledge in uh, my course. And so um, with a lot of management, a lot of careful planning, I was able to um, connect my students with local artists. And the premise of the whole objective of the podcast was to have students who are not necessarily artists connect with primary sources, the artists in the community, and talk about things not just about art, but also about their process, how it's changed during COVID, their business practices, how um, artists have been using social media during the pandemic to sell their artwork, um, also, has their artwork changed? Um, how are they dealing with it all emotionally? And this is during our hard lockdowns. Um, this is when we were um, not really vaccinated. We weren't vaccinated. Uh, it was during the time that um, the vaccine the vaccine wasn't out. So it was most students were at home taking um, online, fully online courses. So it connected them to each other, and it connected um, them to the community in this uh, virtual platform, which is great. And um, I think students enjoyed it. And that's pretty much the, the start of, of Exploring Art podcast. It's changed. Um, we have different models now. We have the, um, the interview, but we also um, have a portion of students that work on case studies um, together and they solve case studies as well. 
Awesome, yeah. And, and I think that's one of the cool things about this Exploring Art podcast is that it's also part of a course, right? So students do it as a part of a class. Sometimes we need that extra incentive to, to really try something new. Um, when I was a, still a student here in undergrad, um, the first time I ever tried podcasting was because of a, a class that I took for Bold, the communication agency. So a huge shout out to Lily uh, de la Calle and the, the Bold agency because they, they're great and they really helped me start uh, you know, podcasting and checking it out. Um, so why is podcasting important in a university setting now? Yes, that's me. So, um, and I wanted to pose a question to all of you first. Why do you all listen to podcasts? Or what are some interests that you have centered around podcasting? Is there a type of podcast that interests you or a specific topic that you're interested in? Yeah, feel free to write in the chat as well if you're joining virtually or just tell us like why why you why you listen, you know, like what's your main your main reason for listening to a podcast? Anyone? Anyone anyone? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, some of those true crime podcasts are awesome. So that's definitely one of them. And we're going to talk about a little bit about how people have um, shifted different mediums that they utilize to get some of like their favorite type of news or shows or interests. That's a great one. Were you going to mention something too? Yeah, those Bad are news. great yeah. to like examples as well. One related to news, I'm big on getting my news from co podcasting as well. And then meditations. That's something I've actually been trying to get a little more into that I use over Instagram. But I've heard that there's so many options um, on Spotify. Do we have a few on Zoom? Uh, a few in the chat echoes yeah. some of the responses that we got in the room, some uh, true crime murder mystery fans. Um, others said to gain a new perspective or to learn a new language or learn new skills. Um, I personally, for a bit of escapism, love some good podcast fiction. There's some really good things out there. Yeah, those are some awesome examples. Um, can we go to the next slide? Okay, and then here, um, as you can see, there's lots of different reasons that the university's systems are shifting to utilizing podcasting more often. To learn new things is one of the most popular responses, and most of you mentioned that. Um, to be entertained, so that's probably the category that something like our true crime can fit into. Um, staying up to date with the latest topics, like our news sources, uh, to relax, again, with the meditation, um, feeling inspired to escape for companionship. It's just an awesome opportunity and another way to get lots of great information. And the platforms are growing with the type of podcasting that are becoming available. So there's just more and more outreach that um, you all can do. And as you heard from each of our own stories, we all use podcasting in the university setting for something completely different. So we wanted to make a mention of that before we move on. Yeah, so then just kind of keeping on that note of how things have changed or how things might be different now after, after COVID, not after COVID, but you know after the start of COVID, right? Um, so this is another study that we found that shows that, yeah, the typical podcast listener is typically you know white, um, but it's been diversifying this past year, which is really interesting. So now we're seeing larger facets of the Hispanic and the black community becoming podcast listeners that we didn't see pre-COVID, which is really interesting. And, and that goes along with just us, you know, I think being virtual for the past year, I'm um, trying to find different outlets to communicate with each other. So I think these last two slides really go to show that you know podcasting is really primed to be a really big and one of the main ways um, to really get entertainment out and grow an audience and kind of um, you know create something entertaining and diversify what you're doing um, when it comes to creating content content online. Right? It's becoming a bigger a bigger way that we interact with the world. Right? Um, and a more diverse and increasingly diverse way that we interact with the world. So especially looking at the last slide. You know, to learn new things and to be entertained is the main reason why people listen to podcasts, right? Combined with the diversifying population, I think us as a university, number one, is primed. You know, that's exactly what we do here, right? We have this diverse community of FIU students. Um, 
what we do here is to teach new things and to entertain, right? So I think us as a university is really primed to host, you know, podcasts that do well, but you as a, as a university student as well, um, you know, it's a really good time to get started on this. Um, so podcast changing and transitioning medium. So staying on that topic of things changing the past year. Um, so you wanted me to share about Dirty John? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Dirty John, um, which was played by my favorite actor, Eric Bana, um, um, was a actual do you, um, LA Times article. Um, sort of, it was a podcast. Actually, it was an article turned into a podcast and then turned into a TV series, I believe, for USA. It was for a, tab a cable news, a cable channel. And um, that's an interesting thing, how podcasting um, has this idea of it's, it's transmedia, um, which something that I'm interested in. And as a COIL instructor, I've been able to connect with a faculty member in Venezuela who actually has students in his university focus on transmedia, which is turning a podcast or a YouTube channel or an article in a newspaper or a Twitter. We talked about Twitter, um, a Twitter um, tweet into something that turns into something else. And, it, and it's distributed throughout all these different um, online platforms. And it's just um, very interesting to me how this has a, a it transforms and um, different people have access to it. Um, and that's an example of Dirty John. That was like my first exposure to transmedia. And I, it was a personal connection. I, you know, was connected to the podcast. Um, I didn't read the article. I was first, it was the podcast for me, then the article, then the TV show. And then, um, and then that's it. And then my mom watched it too. She enjoyed it. Exactly, exactly. So we just kind of wanted to emphasize, continue to emphasize the way that podcasting has changed this past year with COVID and this kind of new virtual world. So exactly like Roxana mentioned, you know, there's podcasting that transcends the auditory medium, right? Which is opens up a whole new world of possibilities when you start your own podcast. You know, you can start your own podcast auditorily mainly, but it can grow into a, twi a Twitch stream. It can grow into a YouTube channel, right? So there's ways to, di to diversify the content that you're creating via podcasts. Like another example that we have up there is uh, is modern love if you all have watched that has anybody seen that on amazon prime tv no oh man check it out i guess i'm just super cheesy but um i actually so it's a new york times podcast actually so shout out to the new york times one more time okay um and this is also all mentioned in the new york times article as well that is paired with this uh tuesday times roundtable they talk about how in hollywood specifically the podcast um population is diversifying as well not just in the population but also in different ways to consume podcasts right which is the perfect example with Dirty John and, and Modern Love. So I saw Modern Love first as a TV series on Amazon Prime, and they're like short form. Um, and then I started listening to it as a podcast because I was like, oh, this is a podcast. This, this came from a, um, well, it started off as a, as a like news, you know, clip, not a clipping, a, a column news column, right, from the New York Times, where people in New York would send in their love stories. Then it transitioned to a podcast where they have uh, people reading those um, news columns and kind of debriefing these stories of love and lost love and all of that. And now it's a TV series on, on uh, Amazon Prime, right? So there's different ways that podcasts are diversifying and growing. Um, so keep that in mind as well. Yeah, go ahead. So um, with the podcast that we have for Exploring Art Podcast, um, our goal is to actually uh, connect my students here at FIU um, with the students at, in Venezuela. And we're actually working together, um, not only on the podcast, but actually creating these um, different, like posting our information on different um, platforms. And so the UCAP students in Venezuela, with the assistance of Professor Jimenez, that's what those students are going to be working on. They're going to actually take our information, what they've learned from our interviews and from our case studies, and they're going to distribute it through all these platforms. And then hopefully our algorithms start changing for our own podcast, because at this time, our podcast, the audience, which I think it's a few slides that we're going to be talking about our audience, our audience is just our students, our classmates, our peers, and perhaps abuelita, is listening to the podcast. 
<laughs> at this time. But well, our goal is that um, we want um, Exploring Art Podcast to be a podcast that is picked up by universities around the country and, um, and um, other students that are taking art appreciation courses or um, curious about Miami artists and um, not just the Miami artists, but national artists and international artists. We've also had um, an interesting engagement with with artists that are not um, either English speakers or Spanish speakers. Um, we use we use Google Translate or we try to create a, a global connection um, because it's not limited to just Spanish or English for our podcast. It's Portuguese and French and other languages as well. Yeah, that's a great point. And we'll, we'll touch upon that as well when we talk about audience, because that's a huge point. Um, we also incorporate like um, transcriptions of our episodes to make it as accessible to, to everyone as possible. And if you use Zoom, which we'll, we'll get into actually, because that's another tip, but it's, it's a lot easier if you use Zoom. Um, so another thing that we want to talk about so is what you need to start a podcast, right? So, so now let's talk about you, you as a, as a person, as a, as a human. Um, if you want to start a podcast, you know, what, what do you need? What do you need to do? How hard is it? It seems super daunting. You need all this technical stuff and all of this crazy stuff. Um, that's not necessarily the case, okay? So this is actually a little far away from some of you. Um, but these are this is from RSS, a really, pod, a really popular podcasting website. So these are a couple steps, number one, and then we're going to go over materials that you need to start a podcast. So number one, define your niche, know your audience, okay? So really think about what you want to do. And we'll also send you this, this, uh, this, these slides. We can probably send this to them, right, if you want to check it out later, right? Um, so define your niche and define your audience. So what is your podcast about? Who do you want to listen? What's the niche audience that you're, that you're going into? If you want to start a true crime podcast, what, what section of true crime do you want to focus on? You know, maybe there's a niche within the niche of true crime that you can really capitalize on, right? So really think about that. Uh, number two, create episode subjects or sub-subjects, which I think is really interesting as well. So um, I think it helps a lot when each of your episode has a, ha each of your episodes have a goal or a particular subject in mind. So when people read that in the caption or in the description, they know what they're getting per each episode. That may fall under, you know, obviously your overarching theme. Uh, number three, pick your format and hosting style. Very important. So do you want to do this alone? Do you want to do it with three friends? Do you want to do it with one friend? Uh, I've seen even people do it. Like if you if you go on Reddit, if you're Reddit people, um, on the podcasting subreddit, people even look for co-hosts online that may be in different states, you know? virtually. So how do you want this to look like? Do you want it to be a conversational podcast where you are interviewing people or do you want it to be more of a of a thought out, you know, um, podcast with that structured, more of a structured podcast where you're reading a story that you pre-wrote, right? So think about all of those things. Number four, get the right equipment, which we're going to go over in a second. So think about what you're going to specifically need for your podcast based on the things that we just talked about. You know, how many people are going to be in the room, how many people are not going to be in the room, what platforms are you using? Uh, number five, time to record. So pick a solid name for your show. If you don't use your own name, um, it should be memorable. It should be short and sweet. It should be descriptive of your niche. So think about a name. This is probably the hardest part, right? So you're like really trying to think about what what to name this. What what to what like what do what am I trying to say by my name and and uh, by this podcast? My first podcast ever that I started was in like 20. Uh, 2017, I think it was, with my best friend. And it started because of the Bold class. Um, so it started off, the assignment was that we needed to have five episodes that kind of um, have a theme. So I started interviewing local musicians, because I'm a musician myself, so I interviewed five uh, bands and musicians that I, that I liked a lot, which is kind of funny because some of them it was the first time I met, and now we're like super close friends all these years later. But the first time we met was on a podcast. Then it kind of transitioned into me and my friend Austin just kind of like talking about life and different subjects. So we ended up naming it Nocturnal, which I was kind of proud of, right? Like, like Nocturnal, but with tone, right? So uh, you can think about that, you know? It, it's really hard. It's really hard. Uh, number six. Turn your recording into a podcast. So really important, design your artwork. You can get someone on Fiverr to do it for $5. You can make it yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, you can get one of your friends who does graphic design to make it, but make something that really catches people's attention and goes along with your themes, right? Number seven, launch and market your show. So develop a marketing plan. Where are you going to host this? I know TikTok is, a, is really popular now with like podcast clips that we've been trying to use as well. So how are you going to launch this? How are you going to get people to know about this, right? So all things to consider. So equipment you may need. So 
for you as a human, if you're starting this tomorrow, what do you need? And there's different ways to do this. So kind of like this setup is, I think, the easier setup and something that I use particularly. The first one is, is honestly optional. You don't really need this. The way that I do our stories and the way that I've done the more than a major podcast for the Honors College as well when I was, when I was at Honors was all through Zoom. We, you know, we were in this virtual world. Um, you can do this in person if you'd like. You would need a little bit more of a sophisticated setup, but not even that crazy. Um, so if you want to do something in person, for example, or if you want to get slightly fancier, you can get um, a microphone set up or an audio box, right? So you can find uh, bundles of this that comes with the microphones, headphones, you know, the audio box, um, the, the software, the editing software. Primarily it's for music, but also for podcasting. You can find this if you just Google like, you know, audio recording um, bundle. You'll find them for like 230, 250, you know, which is an investment. But if you want to get just slightly more serious, I think it's, it's a good one. You can also use things like uh, roadcasters, right, that are a little bit more portable. You can find them on websites like B&H and you, don't, you wouldn't need any of that. You would just need um, the roadcaster itself and it connects like uh, headphones and the memory card. So it's very portable. So if you're going to do more of a portable podcast, maybe you're going to be out in, in the in you know in the jungle or something you can take that anywhere and it'll record straight to the to the to the roadcaster and then all you do is take that SD card and put it in your laptop right so there's different ways of doing this but if you want to get super simple you don't need any of that right you can just do it straight through your you know um, laptop microphone straight through your laptop webcam if you really want to get bare bones right yeah Most and of we've done Zoom yeah. so we've also like CLS we primarily utilize Zoom. And especially because when we kicked it off, everybody was still like on their own, like doing their own thing. So we would just connect via Zoom and it was a perfect way to download the transcription, um, save the audio and then go ahead and upload it. So very simple. And I think you utilize the similar. So I have, I have students log into Zoom using their FIU Zoom accounts. They record the video, they send me the file and then um, through, they send it to exploring our podcast at gmail.com <laughs> and they send me the file and I upload it to Anchor and then Anchor um, students provide me with a description and an episode title. And then I post it on Anchor and then Anchor distributes the podcast to Spotify, iTunes, um, and different podcasting sites. So yeah. it's very easy and it keeps all the work super organized. And I think that the sound quality is, is perfectly fine for a student run podcast. Exactly. Yeah, totally. And all the podcast hosting sites, they all do similar functions. So she mentioned Anchor. With CLS, we utilize Podbean. Um, and there's a lot of host sites that are free. They do the basics. And then if y'all, you know, get really fancy with your podcast, you really want to invest, there's different levels that you can, you know, buy into different subscriptions and things like that. But this is just like the bare minimum, the bare minimum to consider. Totally. Do, how much time do we have? Are we, are we running out? Are we, uh, we have some time? Oh, okay, cool. Okay, perfect. I was like running through this. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Okay, so perfect. Exactly what they said. So headphones optional. If you want to do that, you know, totally. But you mm -hmm. don't have to. Um, and they don't even have to be fancy ones. Most of the guests, like like they mentioned, um, for more than a major that I did through the Honors College or through our stories, most of our guests, you know, I, yeah, exactly. You know, they're using their AirPods or they're using their <laughs> their um, <laughs> Apple headphones, right? Or they're just using their computer audio. And it sounds great. You know, it sounds awesome. So it's really not that big of a deal as you'd think. You know, especially when you're starting off, like they said, maybe start off on Zoom. And if you want to get a little fancy, once you're a little bit more invested, yeah, invest in like some microphones and, and uh, a little audio setup, right? But not necessary. Um, laptop with Zoom capabilities. So I recommend, you know, do it on Zoom. It's a little bit easier for people if you want to do that virtually. You know, if you want to do it face to face, it's, there's something to that human connection in, in the same room. Um, I would definitely say, yeah. But I think that in the, the, the smart thing to do is to do it on Zoom with a camera so that later on you can take that podcast audio, you can use the podcast audio, put it into a podcast, but then take that visual, put it on YouTube and throw it into TikTok and I, uh, Instagram. And, and that way you're starting to loop in that idea of transmedia, put it as a, as a still on Twitter. And that's how you connect um, your art, your, your, you, you work on branding and marketing, but you get your podcast out, you know, sooner to audiences that you want your, to listen to your podcast. Totally. Definitely use, use the video function and, mm -hmm. and encourage your guests to use one. Um, something that I didn't put on here, but that reminds me of is that, um, 
when you do have guests on, right, um, whether it's virtual or in person, I have a little a little virtual form that I do on FIU Web Forms, but you can do it on Google Forms that kind of has like a rundown, almost like a release form, right, that just kind of has a rundown of name, you know, topics that they might want to cover just to give me an idea when I'm researching or, or thinking about what they're doing, right? Um, a place to input their headshot, right? Or a picture of themselves or their logo or anything like that so that I can use when I'm creating the marketing. Um, a place that kind of does a little bit of a disclaimer as to what we can't or can talk about, right? Um, and then like a signature. So you can also think about that when you're bringing people in. I do that virtually as well. Um, but yeah, laptop with Zoom capabilities, like Amanda was mentioning earlier, this is a this is a big pro tip, okay? If you well not I'm not a, I'm a pro technically I guess, but tip, right? <laughs> if you record on Zoom, when you press record, it's going to give you the option to record to the cloud or to your computer. Just record to the cloud <laughs> yes. every single time, right? It's not going to fill up your computer, but then also you'll you'll get access to that audio transcript. Mm -hmm. You'll get access to like different t different versions of the video. You'll get access to the the separate audio file, right? So make sure to do that. That was a big headache for us at Honors yeah. when we first started. And it makes everything way more simpler when you're going to begin editing. The editing process, like if you all you collected was the audio and it's on your computer, it makes it so much harder to like make adjustments, make changes. Even the transcripts, once you download them, it's awesome because you can go in and make edits. You know, a lot of times the computer will pick up different words or different phrases that may not have been what people were communicating. So you have a chance to make all those edits and upload everything. Like Roxana was mentioning, when you collect all those pieces, the video, the audio, the transcripts, it's so much easier to upload than to all your hosting sites and have those clips for marketing purposes, for the artwork and branding that I know we're gonna go into in a second. Mm -hmm. But you're sharing all of that on all of your platforms. It gets so many more viewers and listeners to come into your podcast later on when you've taken those extra steps at the beginning to make sure that when you're recording that you're incorporating like all of those pieces too. Totally, totally. Um, I was gonna add something about that. Um, man, now I'm forgetting. Uh, okay, well, well, we'll, we'll keep going. That'll probably come to me. But yes, totally. And then also artwork and branding, like we mentioned, very important. You know, just think about what you want it to look like. Think about different different formats. I would always, um, whenever I would get ready to post an episode, I'd have a square version. I'd have the vertical Instagram story. I'd have like a TikTok video. Like I would use the videos from Zoom and put it into like a TikTok version to put like a one minute clip right out there to give people like a taste of, of what the episode's gonna talk about, right? Oh, that's what I was gonna say. So when it comes to the transcript, something that's really easy when it comes to editing as well and really handy is that since it's transcribing what you're saying, whenever there's like a part of the podcast that I know I'm gonna have to edit out or that I know that maybe there's like a glitch in like the Wi-Fi and they come out, come out for a second, right? And I know I'm gonna have to edit that part. I always like say verbally out loud, I'm like, okay, future Enrique, edit here, right? And then when, when it's later, I go to the transcript and I look up future Enrique and, and boom, right there. Mm -hmm. it, it takes me to the exact, exact spot of the episode where I need to edit. So, um, you know, I thank my future self for that. So, yeah, it's very handy. So check that out. And it's all, it's all handy because of Zoom. Podcasting and host site, we talked about this a little bit as well, but there's, mm -hmm. you know, there's a bunch of different podcasting host sites you can use. There's Libsyn, there's Podbean, um, there's so many, right? I use Podbean as well, and um, this is, so the cool thing about the podcast host site, so it's very important, it can, it can be confusing at first, and this is a lot of information we're throwing at you, so if you have questions after this session, um, you know, feel free to send us an email, feel free to reach out to us so that we can answer any of your questions. I, met, I can meet with you, we can go through these basics, but the podcast host site is where you're gonna put everything, okay? So this is basically um, your home your home base, right? So this is where you're gonna upload your, your artwork, you're gonna uh, upload the name of your podcast, you're gonna upload the descriptions, you're gonna upload everything. You're gonna upload your episodes, the descriptions for your episodes, the title for your episodes, right? So the cool thing is that um, through the podcast host sites now, most of them make it pretty easy for you to submit your actual podcast to Spotify and Apple Podcasts and all of that, right? It used to be a little bit harder. You would have to copy the RSS feed and take it to a specific website, but now they do it straight through the, the host site. So, and it'll walk you through it, especially on Podbean. I'm a little bit more familiar with that. It gives you steps, like it tells you, it gives you steps when you start a new account until you're ready to publish, right? 
And one of those steps is to submit your RSS feed to these sites. So um, the cool thing is that you only have to do this one time. So you only have to set up the name and the description and all of that one time. And every single time after that, um, you're good to go. So once you um, you know upload your first episode, it'll be straight like uploaded straight to Spotify and all the streaming platforms. And you don't have to you know figure you don't have to mess with that again. So then let's say you want to upload a new episode. Um, all you have to do is go in there, upload the episode, press you know publish, and then it's going to be up on Spotify within like a few seconds, which is super cool. Um, same with your description and your title. And if you ever need to change that, you can change that on your actual host site, and then it'll change everywhere. You know, it might take a little bit of time. Sometimes it takes like a couple hours, but it'll change everywhere. And then a podcast editing software. Um, so a lot of people use different things. You can use Audacity. It's free. So if you want to use something free and easy, check out Audacity. You can download it for free. Some people, if you're more familiar with the Adobe programs, I know some people use Premiere Pro to edit. Some people, um, or if you're maybe a little bit more familiar with audio engineering, you can use some of the digital audio workspaces, you know, that you might all already use for recording audio. Um, and then, you know, that can be simple too, you know, make some cuts here, add some intro music, you know, compress. Uh, EQ, you know, if you're familiar with that, but it doesn't have to be complicated. Interview structure. So, yes. yeah. so I can go over a little bit about interviewing structure. So when you're considering what type of podcast you want to do, um, it's always important to consider, OK, how is this conversation going to go? Is it going to be very conversational? Is someone just sharing their personal story and I'm facilitating or guiding them in doing that? Is it more of a reflective piece? Um, or am I writing down some advice, some of my own experiences, and then I'm going to be talking about it in a more structured way? Or is it very like Q&A format, where I have certain questions set up, I might be sending them over um, to the people that I'm interviewing, and we've had like a conversation to prepare for the podcast. So they're aware of the type of questions that I'll be asking, and then that's how we approach our podcast. Um, sometimes it's better to come in a little bit prepared versus just doing it like on the fly with no preparation because that means there's going to be a lot of editing um, afterwards. Because a lot of times people are like, oh, give me a second, let me think about it. There may be long pauses or maybe it gets repetitive with something that they're sharing because they haven't had time to think about it. Um, especially like for my style as an introvert, like I need time to think through what I wanna communicate. You know, so those are things to be mindful of. Like, who are you interviewing? Um, what is their style? What do they want to share? Or are you sharing something personally? And how are you going to prepare to deliver that message? Um, so that's a little bit about interview structure. Roxana, do you have anything you want to add? So I'm a little bit different because I assign the students the project. Um, their their role is, um, well, it starts with the meet and greet assignment where the students all get together first and they it's like a pre-production meeting where they work on some of their fears and um, they try to brain, brainstorm a positivity plan to see, um, to get over those um, concerns. And then um, they work independently researching the artist and developing interviewing questions. So they work independently. Um, and then they get together with the artist and they uh, share um, all the interviewing questions that they've developed and what they've learned about the artist uh, privately. And then they, uh, the idea is to have um, a conversation with this artist with the questions that they've developed um, on their own and uh, the research that they've done independently. That's the structure of um, how the interview goes. It's up to the students because they all need to work together as a collaboration um, during the um, recording of the podcast. And, you know, most times the artist takes the, the, you know, the active role of just like talking about their artwork and it makes it very easy for some students and some groups because the artist is like, oh, talking about their artwork. And the students have very, uh, just a slim chance to like throw in like, but uh, wait, uh, I have to ask you this question. And um, so it's it just, it's just dynamic basically. Um, so I would say that our interviewing structure for interviews is dynamic. Um, and I like it that way because it is a student podcast. And the idea is for students to make mistakes. I'm an old school art teacher mm -hmm. who is happy about, um, you know, mistakes. 
So yeah, the more mistakes, no. the better. <laughs> Those are some great examples. And you can, you don't have to choose one type of interview structure. I think that's like one of the most important things to keep in mind. Maybe y'all find something that works really great for yourself and you can stick to that or you can mix it up. For CLS, we kind of shifted it based on who we were talking to. When we were talking with alumni, it was more of a Q&A. And when the student groups were creating their own podcast, their interview structure was very much like either sharing stories or very reflective, talking about what they've accomplished over the past year. And they made it very conversational within themselves. And they kind of just had bullet points and they knew what they were going to go off of. So, you know, find what works for you and definitely try um, different ones. Like Roxana said, you're going to learn from mistakes. So the only way that you'll figure out what works best is trying a few different um, yeah. types of structures. And one requirement um, for my assignment is that they have to engage for over 20 minutes with the artist or um, engage with each other for 20 minutes um, or more. Uh, that's one of my requirements. It's almost as if you turn in a term paper and meets, meets, needs to meet that word count. Well, at the same time, it has to meet that time count. Um, I am a fan of long podcasts. Mm -hmm. Those three hour podcasts or more are some of my favorites. Um, and so I try to encourage my students to um, spend time with the artist or spend time with each other because I think that it develops the conversation it, uh, um, towards the end. You start hearing um, how students become more comfortable with each other and they start really having a wonderful conversation, which is the art of conversation. <laughs> it's, it's what podcasting is all about. Yeah, if you like talking to people, this is for you, so. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, a couple more things before we wrap up. I know we're getting close. So we, we had been speaking about this. So creating a relationship with the audience, you know, super, super important. And, and how do you do that? And how do you focus on that? I think number one, one of the most important things is, is consistency. And this is number one for creating um, a relationship with your audience, but then also just for growing your audience. Um, I think a lot of people get discouraged at first, especially with podcasting. When you start off and you're posting episodes and you're working hard and you're not getting that many views um, through your host site, you'll probably get um, you'll probably get a lot of stati stat statistics right um, about who's listening where they're listening from how long are they listening right so it's easy to get discouraged but I think especially with the podcasting game it's about the long it's about the long plan right so you really just have to keep going keep posting and people are gonna start tuning in people are gonna start telling their friends so don't get discouraged at first and that builds a relationship with the audience you know they start they really start listening to you they start getting to know you the you know and, and don't be scared to um, I think a big thing is if you're if you're having a structured podcast even if you're structured you know I think um, it's important and I think that it's it's um it's good to put a little bit of yourself in there, whether it's, you know, what you did that morning or, you know, what you're thinking about, even for a second, because that's when that's how oh I thought something fell. Uh, <laughs> that's how the audience starts to get to know you. You know, I met with uh, David Drucker from FIU News. If you all know him on Twitter, he's mm -hmm. at the FIU Sports Guy. He's really funny. You should check out his tweets. Um, but uh, he works for FIU News. He has a podcast as well that's amazing. Check it out. Uh, but we were talking, and he was saying that when I used to do more than a major for honors, that um, that uh, it felt like, uh, you know, we don't know each other well, but he said that it felt like he knew me, you know, because, you know, even though I was interviewing, you know, CEOs of companies and Mark Rosenberg and stu current students, Students, right? Um, I would try to interject a little bit about my life, you know, just because that's what makes things fun, you know. And your audience gets to know you; they like you, right? Um, so I think a balance of, of that, you know, being personal with your audience, being honest, right? I think everybody can can kind of um, feel when you're being honest, right? Especially in your podcast, not overthinking it too much, being comfortable when you're recording with your guests, having that good rapport with your guests, which I think also goes into preparing. They were talking earlier about um, preparing in the last slide, about preparing and, and how to structure your interview. Definitely prepare because you'll be able to tell. You know, if you're interviewing someone, it, it depends on what type of podcast you're doing, right? But if you're interviewing someone and you have that good rapport with them, um, you'll be able to feel it through the audio, right? So like the art of like podcasting is, is a very personal thing. You know, you're speaking directly into someone's ear pretty much, right? So the way that you speak, the inflections of your voice are really going to create that intimacy between you and the and the audience, right? And create that that relationship that's going to have people coming back, right? So I'd say that's important. Yeah. 
So um, I w listened to a podcast by an attorney who owns, of course, a law firm, uh, a criminal, he's a cr criminal defense attorney. So why is an art instructor listening to a podcast about a criminal, um, by a criminal defense attorney? Well, I enjoy his podcast because he um, shares um, current events through that lens of the law, which is very interesting to me. Um, but he also uses the podcast um, to sell his services. And so that is also part of your audience. If you're creating a podcast, perhaps you are a, uh, I don't know, a dentist, and you have a podcast to talk about dental care, um, what's new in dental, I, whatever it may be. But I think that that's also part of your audience. You're, if you're a business owner, and um, you will create a podcast about uh, what you're selling or the services that you offer. And I think that that's just a great way of marketing your businesses. And your, so therefore, your, the people that you service, the people that you sell to become your audience as well. So it's not just for entertainment or for educational purposes, but it, there is that business side to um, developing or wanting to have a podcast as well. Um, or yeah, or even if you're like um, publishing a book or you're a writer and you want to sell that book, you might want to create a podcast about your book series or whatever it may be. Totally, totally. I think that hit the nail on the head. So just keep that in mind. You know, everything that you do is, is leading towards creating that relationship with that audience from the artwork to the topics that you choose. Um, so now I know that we're getting close on time. So this is the last thing that we're going to go over. We wanted to just kind of give you some real world examples of some success stories that have happened with us with our podcast that will hopefully hopefully encourage you to uh, to hop on the train and, and get started. So you want to yeah, wanna start? I can begin. Um, so one of our podcast success stories that I think worked really well was with our Panther Community Action Board. It's a group of student leaders that helped me in facilitating and organizing our days of service. They oversee the mini grants that come out of our department and things like that. And so at the height of the pandemic, we were obviously experiencing a little bit of a low morale um, centered around what our typical events and initiatives look like. And the students were having a hard time with grasping how can we engage um, virtually and still make a difference, still uncover different social issues happening in the community and different things like that. When I presented them the idea of coming up with a podcast, they got really excited and they began to get very creative um, because podcasts kind of opens a new, I feel like a new world of creativity for people, especially when you go in, do some of your own searches, see what's out there. And so they modeled their um, podcast after just having a conversation with each other about what has gone well, what hasn't gone so well, but what are they looking forward to? And it was just an honest conversation. They shared it out with a lot of their friends. And when people that you're already connected with are listening to what you're working on, they see that you're being, that you're kind of invested and you're investing your time and your efforts into a, a new initiative. That's when we definitely had an uptick and mini grant opportunities where students were like, oh, this is still happening. This is still, okay, my friends are still working on this program. Um, and they talked a little bit about our upcoming um, days of service at that time. And so um, we received like over 150 attendees virtually, something we had not expected because those are typical numbers for in-person events. Um, but they really blasted out that little podcast that they organized and it really got people's attention because they were putting in the effort um, outside of what we typically do, which is just sharing flyers on Instagram or messaging our friends a flyer. They actually put together um, you know, their thoughts and what they had in mind and they're like, hey, this is what we're working on. These are the partners that are going to be there. This is the opportunity um, to work with some of our biggest community partners like Christie House, the Humane Society of Greater Miami, Lotus House. We did projects for all of those organizations that typically would take place in person. So that was one of our biggest success stories from CLS. And we've had a few um, that also incorporated our alumni where students are like, this is so awesome. Like, who else are you gonna interview? Or some of our own alumni asking if they can be interviewed in the future. So that might open doors too, of people wanting to be 
featured on your upcoming podcast? So um, I'm interested in um, group projects. And so in the past, there was group projects point one, which was a uh, just a project that students would work in the classroom. And um, the group project was a little bit stagnant and students would just like complete a project and it was just in class or online. I teach most, I teach online um, most of the time. And so, but I wanted something that would be a, a group project that had some sort of um, connection with, you know, the world. And so um, I think that the podcast is almost like a group project 2.0, which uh, students are first, oh, like, oh, no, I'm going to be working in a group. And students really fear the group. But I think that having the podcast and students working on a podcast, because the product is so professional, right? That I think that it kind of, you know, takes that thought, that original thought, and kind of converts it into like, wow, I really did make something in this class. It's not like, oh, I worked on a group project, which is just 1.1, you know, 1.0 group project. This is 2.0 group project, which is like it's a real professional product that is shared and um, distributed. And then also one of my, um, I, I, I really invested in, sharing or like introducing my students to a lot of soft skills. And I think that the soft skills that students learn while they're working on a podcast for a exploring art course, which is a 2000 level course here at FIU. Um, most of my students are freshmen. And so through this process, through this project, um, the podcast, students are developing those um, soft skills. They're reaching out to people that they do not know, artists in the community. Some of them are kind of famous and important artists. And so they're reaching out to them. They're um, setting up Zoom sessions, scheduling appointments, um, researching on their own, um, connecting with their peers. Scheduling is a soft skill that all of us need um, to develop. And so um, I, I'm really interested in that as, as uh, and I think that that's part of the success story of, of having a podcast for my classes. Awesome. I'll keep mine super short because I want to see if we have time for questions. But um, one of the things that I really enjoyed about the Art Stories Project is that it's encouraged students to do it themselves, you know, to, to do a podcast or to even just pick up a disposable camera if they're going on a trip with their friends, give them each a camera, have them take pictures and have them make a reflection, right? Which I think is really, really sweet and really incredible. Um, but I'd say like the biggest success story has actually happened recently. We've been interviewing the students from the spring 2021 cohort. And one student named Diana, um, we interviewed her uh, a, a couple weeks ago and she's part of the BSU. And she said that she wants, she liked the project so much that she wanted to do it herself with the BSU, but she was looking for funding, right? To do so. So we ended up, cause we were looking for different ways to pivot um, the R Stories podcast after we finished with the spring cohort. So we decided that was perfect. That was a perfect idea. Her idea is uh, called the Black Joy Project. So it's gonna be like the next iteration of our stories, like the next season, um, that she wants to capture um, moments of black joy you right um, that are that are uh, almost seemingly increasingly rare from what we see in the media, right? So it's um it's going to be a really sweet project. She's incredible, and we're going to be funding it. So being able to take that from a student that was a participant in spring 2021 and make it a, a bigger part of the project because they liked it so much that they wanted to start their own idea, their own their own uh, their own thing was was really sweet. Um, and I'm happy that it'll it's all working out. Um, but yeah, do we have a few minutes for questions, or are we wrapping up? Couple, any questions? Maybe in the chat? Uh, yeah, I've got one. Um, well, let's, uh, we'll start here. So you guys all touched on this at some level and what we would love is some tips, tricks, or some success stories of how you've gone about pitching to a possible guest to come onto your, your podcast. So I, give, I provide all my students in the assignment um, directives and actual script that they will use to either text, call, or email um, the artist that they are supposed to interview. And um, it's very specific. And it also, 
I, um, as the semesters pass, I, I, I make sure to let them know, hey, we have 204 episodes. This is an episode that you could use for marketing purposes or to um, just talk about your artwork or just give that interviewer a benefit of not just participating in the podcast, but also um, something that would benefit them for participating in the podcast. So that's one of the reasons. It's not so much you're doing like, oh, they're coming on to your podcast because you, you need someone to interview. It's more like, what are you going to give the interviewer or the interviewee? What are you going to give them that is benefits them? So in my case, the artists, what they get in return is that they can use the podcast for their own marketing or they can throw it on Zoom or they can use it um, in some forum publication or whatever. But um, they can also, as an artist, it's great to talk about yourself and your art. <laughs> and it helps you. And so I always explain to the students, let them know that they're going to be talking about their artwork and that that's good. Um, one of the things that I've used, besides the benefits, that's a point that I was going to touch upon because that's always a huge selling point mm -hmm. for anyone that you're trying to bring onto the podcast. But in addition to that, I always remind people how simple um, podcasting really is. And I think that's like a huge selling point to people that have never done podcasting or are apprehensive about being on a podcast because they're nervous. Like, oh, I don't know, not super into the tech stuff. So making sure that they understand how simplified it can be and that you on your end as the main podcaster or the host of the podcast would be doing most of the work beyond the Zoom platform. Um, that's really gotten us a lot of alumni to agree to be on the CLS podcast. Yeah, I'll take this from the perspective of like um, when I did my personal podcast, right? Like, because um, it's probably I feel like that like uh, you might be on the same boat. When I was reaching out to like local musicians, right, or, or or things like that. I mean, it's easy, kind of similar to what Roxana was saying. A lot of the times, you know, it's helpful for people just to talk about their art. But it, but it's you know it's important to realize that sometimes people just won't want to be on the podcast or maybe won't reply to you, right? And that's totally okay. You know, um, it takes time to build those relationships as well. But most of the time, if you just approach someone one, you know, and, and you're like, hey, listen, I'm doing this and it'd be nice to have a conversation with you. I really love your work. Sometimes, you know, you got to talk, you know, do some research as well. Like, be like, I love your song that says this or like, I love your piece that did that. You know, just let them know that you, you, you know more about the work and they're more than just somebody getting on your podcast to be on the podcast, you know. So, but yeah, sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. Just reach out to them and don't be scared. You know, there's a lot of times where you'd reach out to, I would reach out to someone that I thought maybe wouldn't do it, but, but they, you know, they're on the podcast and then we become friends and you talk to them, whether it was my personal one or, or the one through honors or our stories. Um, well, our story is a little bit different, but yeah. And I think it's easier for, for students to um, get an interview from someone than someone who's already a professional. Um, because if you're a student, it's just easier. People are nice. They're like, oh, okay, I'll help you out. And so you, you'll see that most of the time people will say yes to students and no to like someone who already has an established podcast that they know it's part of their business or their career. So, yeah, I think we're wrapping up now. Sherry's coming. So I'll just say if you have any questions, I know we threw a lot of a lot of info at you, you know, send us an email and we, we can talk to you about anything that you'd like. OK, but thank you so much for having us. Uh -huh. Awesome. Let's thank you for being here. I, like you, feel like I know enough that I could at least get started. So thank you all for coming today. Thank you for sharing. It's been a great time.